اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی شرحری صدری و یسرلی امری وحل لقتتن من لسانی یفقہو قولی جز ٹوینٹی سورہ القصص ففٹی ٹو Those to whom the scriptures were given before this, they do not recognize the truth and believe in this. The people mentioned in this verse are the people of the book and this does not mean all the people of the book but only those who had faith in the prophethood of Prophet ﷺ and the revelations of the Quran on the basis of the prophecies given in the Torah and the Injil. Even before the coming of Prophet ﷺ and they converted to Islam when Prophet ﷺ وسلم, announced his prophethood. 53. When it is recited to them, they say, We believe in it. Surely this is the truth from our Rabb. Indeed, we were Muslims even before this. Now, this means that even before this, we were believers in the prophets and the divine books. 54. They are the ones who will be given their reward twice because they have endured with fortitude, repelling evil with good and giving in charity out of what we have given them. Now the Prophet ﷺ said that one of the three persons who will get a double reward is he who belong to the people of the book and had full faith in in his prophet and then affirmed his faith in prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 55 when they hear vain talk they withdraw from it saying our deeds are for us and yours for you peace be upon you we do not desire the way of the ignorant now these people have another good quality that when they hear something absurd from an ignorant foe they simply say salam instead of giving a reply they do not entangle themselves with the ignorant 56 o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you cannot give guidance to whom you wish it is allah who gives guidance to whom he pleases and he is quite aware of those who are guided 57 Those who do not wish to be guided say, If we go along with you and accept this guidance, we shall be driven out from our land. But have we not given them a secure sanctuary to which are brought the fruits of all kinds as a provision from us? But most of them have no knowledge. Now it is reported that Haris bin Usman and other non-believers of Makkah put forward one of the reasons for their not accepting the faith that although they believed that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was truthful and his teachings were based on truth but they feared that if they followed him the entire people of Arabia would turn against them and as a consequence they will be driven out of this land now the Quran answers them and says that their this excuse is false because Allah has already made um, this haram a sanctuary they were safe in it and they were given all kinds of sustenance and fruit in plenty over there so uh, this excuse of theirs was not valid verse 58 how many towns have we destroyed who once flourished in their economy just see those dwellings of theirs only a few of which have been inhabited after him at last we alone became their inheritors 59 your rab would never destroy the towns until he had sent in their metropoles a rasul reciting to them our revelations and we would not destroy towns except when their dwellers had become wrongdoers this means that allah never inflicts punishment without a reason 60 the things which you have been given are but the provisions and adornments of this worldly life and that which is with allah is better and more lasting why don't you use your common sense 61 can a person to whom we have made a handsome promise and he is sure to receive it be like the one to whom we have only given the provisions of this world and he is scheduled to be presented on the day of resurrection for punishment 62 let them not forget that day when we shall call them and ask where are those whom you deem to be my associates 63 those who are proven guilty as charged will say our rab these are the ones whom we led astray we led them astray as we were astray ourselves however we plead our innocence before you it was not us that they worship 
64 then they will be told appeal to your shuraka so they will appeal to them but will get no answer they will see the punishment and wish that they had accepted guidance 65 let them also not forget that on that day he will call them and ask how did you answer our rasuls 66 they will be so confused on that day that they will not even ask one another 67 however the one who has repented in this life and believed and done good deeds may hope to be among those who will achieve salvation again a ray of hope allah says that if you had been believing and acting upon wrong concepts then you got this realization that you were wrong then you seeked allah's forgiveness for what you did in the past and then mended your ways and did righteous deeds so we find that at the end of the day the thing which is crucially important is righteous deeds that's what uh, that is going to save us in the akhirah and the worst says that such are the people about which it is hoped that they are the successful ones 68 your rub creates whatever he wills and chooses for his work whom he pleases it is not for them to choose and assign the powers of allah to whom they want glory be to allah he is far above the shirk that these people commit now the background of this verse is that the chiefs of Quraysh used to object that why is prophethood bestowed upon Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a poor orphan whereas we are much more in strength power and status we are more deserving of this honor than him Allah answers them that creation is my job only that creature is created whom I will create and whatever is bestowed on my creation is also my choice not anyone else's so it is not for you to decide that who will be given uh, prophethood and who will not be given verse 69 your rub knows all that they conceal in their hearts and all that they reveal Verse 70, He is Allah. There is no God but He. Praise belongs to Him in this world and in the hereafter. His is the judgment and to Him you all shall be brought back. 71, O Prophet wasallam, asked them, Have you ever considered that if Allah were to make the night perpetual till the day of resurrection, which deity other than Allah could bring you light? Will you not listen? Now the verse means that uh, it is Allah's power and majesty that uh, the alteration of the day and the night occurs. And if it was that it was night all the time and there was no sun, then what would these people do to enlighten this earth? How would they reach the sun and make it shine? Verse 72 Ask them again, have you ever considered that if Allah makes the day perpetual till the day, of resurrection which deity other than Allah could bring you to the night in which you could rest will you not see now this is the vice versa that if it was day all the time and no night at all then how would you take rest 73 it is out of his mercy that he has made for you the night that you may rest in it and the day that you may seek his bounty so that you may render thanks 74 they should be mindful of that day when he will call them and ask where are those deities whom you deemed my associate 75 and we shall bring forth a witness from every nation and ask bring your proof about other deities besides me then they shall come to know that in reality there is only one god allah and gods of their own inventions have left them in the lurch now who will be these witnesses the prophet of that nation and the verse says that allah will say bring your proof what proof that whatever wrong you did in dunya you bring your excuses for it the shirk the kufr that you did bring its proofs but all such excuses and proofs will not be accepted and they will realize then that the truth lies with allah alone and they will forget their excuses 76 the fact is that Karun was one of Musa salam's people but he rebelled against them we had given him such treasures that their very keys were a heavy burden to a band of strong men when his people said to him do not exalt for Allah does not love the exultant 
Now we find that the verses prior to this revolve around the message that all the wealth and comforts you are given in this world are temporary and it is not wise to exhaust oneself in their love. And here a story which is very relevant to this message is being narrated. This is the story of Karun. He was from the Bani Israel and he was a cousin of Musa alayhi salam. He was a hafiz and a scholar as well. When he saw that the leadership of Bani Israel was in the hands of Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun alayhi salam, he got jealous that uh, after all he was also a cousin and why didn't he have a share in the leadership. So he made a complaint against that to Musa alayhi salam to which he replied that he had no power and this decision was from Allah but Karun was not convinced with this reply and developed jealousy against Musa alayhi salam. He was given an amazing wealth. As the verse says that the keys of his treasures were so much in weight that a group of strong men would carry the keys with difficulty and when his wealth exceeded limits he forgot about deen his being a hafiz or a scholar did not help him and he rebelled against his own nation he sided with Firon rather than his own nation and Yahya bin Salam says that he was appointed by Firon to keep vigilance on Bani Israel and taking advantage of this position he started harassing the Bani Israel and the verse says that the people of his nation tried to warn him that don't exalt yourself so much and don't be so arrogant because Allah does not like arrogance. 77 rather seek by means of what Allah has given you to attain the abode of the hereafter while not neglecting your share in this world. Be good to others as Allah has been good to you and do not seek mischief in the land for Allah does not love the mischief mongers. Now Karun is advised by his people that use this wealth of yours to attain the Akhira by spending it in the way of Allah. Don't just focus on getting more and more hair and send something ahead as well. Now if we make a summary of uh, the points which have been given in these verses is number one that do not let this wealth get into your head. Don't be arrogant and boastful about it. Number two attain the Akhira with it and send something send something ahead. Number three, spend well on yourself also. Number four, do ihsan with others while giving. You have to give more because you are given more. And number five, don't let this wealth become a source of corruption on the earth by giving everyone their due share. 78. He replied, all that I have been given is by virtue of the knowledge that I possess. Did he not know that Allah had destroyed many people before who were mightier in strength and greater in riches than him. But the criminals are not asked about their sins because Allah knows them. Now Karun says that the basic cause of his being wealthy was that he had a deep understanding and skill of managing trade and industry which brings in wealth and whatever wealth he had collected came to him with his personal efforts and skill and there is no favor of Allah involved in it. And this conceited man who thought so much about himself and his mental smartness was in reality so foolish that he had no knowledge that such wealth and skill was also given to people that came before him like the people of Ad, Samud, and they were greatly skilled people of their times but their wealth and skill could not save them from Allah's wrath when they rejected the truth. 79 one day he came out before his people in his worldly glitter. Those who sought the life of this world said ah would that we had the like of Karun's fortune. He is indeed a very lucky man. Now the verse says that one day he came out in the public in his full glamour and people who are impressed by material wealth the shallow people looked at him with envy and wished that if only they too could possess such wealth and thought that how lucky Karun was. Verse 80 but those who were endowed with knowledge said alas for you better is the reward of a love for him that has faith and does good deeds but none shall attain it save those who endured with fortitude. 81 then we cause the earth to swallow him together with his dwelling and he had no host to help him against Allah nor was he able to defend himself. So finally Karun met his fate and he along with his wealth and palaces was sunk into the earth. Neither could he help himself nor any other person could come to his rescue. 
82. Now the same people who envied him for his lot the day before began to say, Alas, we had forgotten that it is indeed Allah who enlarges the provisions for whom he wills and restricts it for whom he pleases. If Allah had not been gracious to us, he could have caused the earth to swallow us too. Alas, we did not remember that the disbelievers never attain felicity. Now the people who were impressed by Karun's wealth now thanked Allah that they were not like him and they had not met the same fate. 83. As for the abode of the hereafter, we have reserved it for those who seek neither glory nor corruption in the earth. The ultimate good is for the righteous. So three qualities of the people of Jannah are mentioned in this verse. Number one, they are not arrogant. Number two, they are not oppressors. And number three, they are Allah conscious. 84. Anyone who brings a good deed shall have something even better, while anyone who brings an evil deed will find that those who perform evil deeds will be punished only to the extent of their deeds. Now the verse says that whoever brings good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase its reward many fold. For example, one good deed, he can get up till the reward of 10 good deeds and even more than that and as for evil deeds one sin will be recorded for one sin done 85 o prophet sallallahu rest assured that he who charge you with the quran will bring you to the best destination say my rab best knows him who has brought guidance and him who is in manifest error now this surah was revealed during the migration of Prophet ﷺ and the background of this verse is that in order to escape the enemies who were following him, Prophet ﷺ did not take the usual familiar route but took other unfamiliar ones. During the course when Prophet ﷺ reached Jofa, which was a well-known place on the way to Medina near Rabih and at this uh, point the conventional route to Medina separates from that of Makkah and at that time he glanced back towards the route of Makkah and remembered his hometown and he was extremely grieved and missed his homeland immensely and this was the time uh, when this verse was revealed and he was given the advanced good news of the victory of Makkah and now in this verse Allah says while making this promise of victory to Prophet that the one who has enjoined the Quran will bring you back to Makkah and this reference contains a hint to the fact that recitation of the Quran and acting on its injunctions would actually be the cause of divine help and manifest victory. 86. You O Muhammad never expected that the book would be revealed to you only through your Rabb's mercy has it been revealed to you. Therefore, do not be a helper in any way to the unbelievers. Prophet ﷺ is addressed that throughout your life, your childhood passed, your youth passed, but you never knew that you will be given this Quran and you will recite it and teach it to people and implement its teachings. And all this is a Rahmah from your Rabb and now that you have got it you have to thank Allah for this blessing and for that what you have to do that you will not side with the people who disobey Allah 87 let no one turn you away from the revelations of Allah now that they have been revealed to you invite people to your Rabb and be not of the mushrikeen and uh, there is something else or also for the shukr of the blessing of this Quran. That is that now nothing should stop your ways, no hardships and no opposition from reciting, implementing and inviting others towards Allah with it and do not side with the mushrikeen. Why is this being said? Why would he side with the mushrikeen? This means that when you do not give the due rights of this book, you automatically side with the mushrikeen because basically this is what they want. 88. Invoke no other God besides Allah. There is no God but Him. Everything is perishable except Him and to Him belongs the judgment and to Him will you all be returned. Surah Ankabut, Verse 1 Alif Lam Mim Verse 2 do the people think that they will be left alone on saying we believe and that they will not be tested? 
The verse means that Allah tests the iman of the believers through trials and then the pure and the impure are sorted out. 3. We did test those who have gone before them. Allah has to see who are the truthful and who are the liars. Verse 4. Or do the evildoers think that they will escape from our reach? How bad is their judgment? Now people who keep on sinning think that somehow or the other they are going to get away with it. Like they say, Allah is Ghafoorur Rahim. Don't be so rigid. Will Allah ask about something as trivial as that? Or that I'll explain it to Allah why I did that and things like that. All are excuses to sin. Allah says that how bad are their decisions which enables them to do these sins. 5. He that hopes to meet Allah must know that Allah's appointed time is sure to come and he hears all and knows all. 6. He that strives does that for his own soul, for Allah is certainly free of all wants and beyond any need of the worlds. Now the word jahid is from mujahida, which means a many-sided struggle. Because the struggle of the believer is many-sided, he has to fight against the shaitan who shows him the losses of goodness and benefits of the evil. Then he has to fight his own nafs which pressurizes him to gratify many desires. Then he has to fight all those men from home to the world outside whose ideology, trends, morality, customs, way of life, social and economic principles may be in conflict with his faith. This struggle is not for a day or two, but it is a lifelong struggle. This struggle carries on every moment of his life. And then the verse says that whoever is carrying this struggle is benefiting his own self. He is doing himself a favor. This is not a favor for Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of want. He is ghani. He doesn't need our ibadah or our struggle, but it's we who need it for our own salvation. 7. As for those who believe and do good deeds, we shall cleanse them of their sins and we shall reward them according to the best of their deeds. Now, two things have to be done. Number one, belief. And number two, good deeds. And then for them, two rewards are mentioned. Number one, being cleansed from sins. And number two, the reward of those deeds. Eight, we have enjoined man to show kindness to his parents. But if they commit shirk with me, of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them. To me is your return and I will inform you of what you have done. Now this verse was revealed in connection with Hazrat Saad bin Abi Waqqas Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. He was one of the 10 companions to whom Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had given the good news of being in paradise. He was an extremely obedient son of his mother and always uh, he was very alert to look after her comfort. When his mother Hana bint Abu Abi Sufyan learned that her son Saad had accepted Islam. She got very upset and warned him against that. And then she swore an oath that she would neither eat nor drink unless he turned back to his ancestral religion. Or she would die of thirst and hunger and he would be blamed universally for being the killer of his mother. Hazrat Saad went to Prophet and asked what to do and then this verse was revealed. The mother did not eat and drink for a day and night and according to another version, three days and nights. For Hazrat Saad's mother's love was one thing and obedience to Allah was another which naturally took preference over everything else. So he went to her and said to her firmly, Dear mother, if there were hundred spirits in your body and they were departing one by one, I would not have deserted my religion, even seeing that scenario. It is now up to you whether you eat and drink or die. In any case, I cannot abandon my religion. And they say that having been disappointed by his firmness, he started eating food. 9. Those who have accepted the true faith and do good deeds shall be admitted amongst the righteous. 10. 
there are some among people who say we believe in Allah, yet when they suffer in the course of Allah, they confuse the persecution of people with the punishment of Allah. But when there comes help in the shape of a victory from your Rabb, they are sure to say, we have always been with you. Is not Allah fully aware of what is in the hearts of the people of the world? Now here in this verse, a trait of a hypocrite is being described that though they are verbally very smart people and they claim that we believe in Allah, we love Allah very much, but when they have to bear something unpleasant during that course, they think it to be a punishment and not like a test which they have to pass for the sake of Allah. 11. Most surely Allah knows those who believe and knows those who are hypocrites. Verse 12, the unbelievers say to the believers, follow us and we will bear the burden of your sins. But they will not bear any burden of their sins. They are surely lying. Now the non-believers of Makkah tried all sorts of devices and plans to mislead the Muslims. One such device was that they asked the Muslims not to leave their ancestral religion in fear of torment in the hereafter because no such thing will take place but in case their belief comes true about the hereafter then they will willingly undertake the responsibility of their sin and bear the punishment on their behalf and the muslims will not suffer at all allah says that such people are liars it is not possible at all that the actual sinner can escape punishment every person will be responsible for his own deeds 13 of course they shall bear their own burdens as well as the burdens of others in addition to their own and on the day of resurrection they will be questioned about their own lies verse 14 we sent Noah to his people and he lived among them a thousand years less 50 then because of their wrongdoings the flood overtook them 15 but we delivered him and all those who were in the ark and we made that ark a sign for the people of the world 16 Likewise, Ibrahim, when he said to his people, Worship Allah and fear him. This is better for you if you understand. 17. You worship idols besides Allah and fabricate falsehood. In fact, those whom you worship besides Allah have no power to give you sustenance. Therefore, seek your sustenance from Allah and worship him and give thanks to him, for to him you shall be returned. Verse 18, if you deny the message, then nations have denied before you. The only duty a Rasul has is to deliver Allah's message clearly. 19, do they not see how Allah originates creation, then repeats its process? Surely it is easy for Allah. So Ibrahim salam says that we have talked about your gods. Now let's talk about my Rabb. And I will explain to you what he is, that he is the one who creates countless new things. He brings them into existence from non-existence and they are all different from each other. And then what happens that a new member continues to come into existence in the place of every dying member of from every species and this is a marvel this is an attribute that belongs to allah alone verse 20 say to them travel through the earth and see how allah originates the creation then creates the later creation surely allah has power over everything 21 he punishes whom he wills and shows mercy to whom he pleases and to him you shall be returned back 22 neither can you frustrate him in the earth, nor in the heaven, nor have you any protector or helper besides Allah? 23. As for those who disbelieve Allah's revelations and deny that they will ever meet him, they are the ones who, who shall despair of my mercy and they are the ones who shall have a painful punishment. 24. The people of Ibrahim had no answer except to say, kill him or burn him. But Allah saved him from the fire when they tried to burn him. Surely in this incident, there are signs for those who believe. 25. After coming out from the fire safely, Ibrahim addressed them, Today you have made idols instead of Allah, a means of affection among yourselves. 
in this worldly life but on the day of resurrection you shall disown and curse one another fire shall be your abode and you shall have no helpers 26 witnessing this whole incident lut alay salam affirmed his belief with ibrahim alay salam finally ibrahim alay salam said i will migrate towards my rab he is the one who is mighty the wise now the context shows that when prophet ibrahim alay salam came out of the fire and spoke uh, the preceding sentences only lut alay salam from the entire crowd came forward to proclaim his belief 27 we gave him ishaq and yaqub and placed the prophethood and the book in his progeny thus we gave him his reward in this life and in the hereafter he will surely be amongst the righteous 28 when luth said to his people surely you are committing such sexual misconduct and no one in the whole world has ever attempted before you 29 do you lust after males commit robbery on the highways and commit evil deeds even in your assemblies his people had no answer except to say bring us the scourge of allah if you are truthful now here three sins of this nation are being mentioned number 1 they were homosexuals number 2 they committed armed robbery and number 3 they committed shameful deeds openly verse 30 lut alay salam prayed o my rab help me against this corrupt nation 31 when our messengers came to ibrahim with the good news they said we are to destroy the people of the township for its people are indeed wrong doers 32 ibrahim said but lut is in there the angels replied we know who is in there we shall certainly save him and his family except his wife who will remain behind 33 and when our messengers came to luth he became sad and anxious on their account for he felt powerless to protect them but they said do not fear nor grieve we shall save you and your family except your wife she will be of those who will remain behind 34 we are going to bring down a punishment from heaven upon the people of this town on account of their transgression 35 surely we have left a clear sign f- from it for the people who care to understand 36 to the people of madian we send their brother shuaib who said o my people worship allah and look forward to the last day and do not transgress in the land wickedly 37 but they denied him so a severe earthquake seized them and by the morning they were lifeless bodies in their own homes 38 likewise we destroyed the people of ad and the samud you have seen the traces of their dwellings shaitan had made their foul deeds fair seeming to them and diverted them from the right way though they were intelligent people 39 musa came to karun firon and haman with clear signs but they remained arrogant in the land yet they could not go ahead of us now the verse says that karun firon and haman thought themselves to be very smart and they were blind in their sense although musa alaihi salam brought clear signs to open their eyes but they would not see or perceive those signs because their hearts were wrapped in veils of arrogance 40 we seized all of them for their sinfulness against some we sent a violent tornado full of stones some were seized by mighty blast some were swallowed up by the earth and yet some we drowned it was not allah who was unjust to them but they were unjust to their own souls 41 the parable of those who take protectors other than allah is that of a spider who builds for itself a dwelling and surely the weakest of all dwellings is the dwelling of a spider if they but knew it now the verse gives a parable that people who depend on others rather than allah are like someone who depends on a spider's web for protection because as we know that the web of the spider is the weakest house of all animals 42 surely allah knows whoever they invoke besides him he is the almighty the all wise 43 these are the parables that we cite for mankind but none will grasp them except the wise 
44 Allah has created the heavens and the earth to manifest the truth surely in this there is a sign for the believers wa akhiru tawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin